Dragons are friends, protectors, and powerful allies in the mysterious world of how to train your dragon. Today, well, we're going to extend our wings and take a dragon-filled journey. So we take a look at every dragon in the franchise, ranking each and every one of them from weakest to strongest. So let's get to it. What's up, guys? This is Danko. I do fight breakdowns, power ranking videos, or more deep dives into your favorite characters and franchises with new videos every week. So if that seems great to you, we'll sit back and enjoy the video. Hit that like button if you want to, or hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Not much really needs to be said here. Terrible Terrors are one of the smallest dragons out there. And while they do live in packs and are surprisingly fearless, they really do rely on that pack mentality to be any sort of threat. Just one terror on their own and they're easily defeated. And all that bravery does tend to bite them in the butt. They'll regularly try and take on bigger and stronger dragons and they'll pay the price for it. However, one plus for the terrible terrors are their accuracy. They have a surprisingly strong fire attack. They're almost like snipers in the dragon world, meaning that they actually have one of the most accurate shots out there. Hobgoblers will literally eat anything in their path. A pack of them will tear through warships, houses, whole towns, literally anything. They'll go into a feeding frenzy. They've got some powerful jaws as well. Once they chop down on something, they're not letting go. The Hobgobbler Slobber also possesses some incendiary abilities as well. As soon as it touches something, it'll burst into flames. Finally, and oddly enough, the Hobgobblers have evolved to just be extremely fertile and are really productive in that way, meaning that they can quickly overwhelm an area with their high numbers. Just like their name suggests, the Smothering Smoke Breath's primary ability is to emit a dense smoke from their bodies, using it to either hide from enemies or blind their victims. Because of this ability, they have been thought to be a sort of fog monster, and actually became more legend and myth, with some Vikings not even believing they actually existed. Smothering Smoke Breath's hunt in complete stealth, hidden by the smoke, they surround their prey and close in around it till it can't see anything. Then they attack. Now the only problem here is that their strength is solely through numbers. When smoke breaths hunt in packs, well they can be a formidable threat, but just one on its own is easily taken out because they're individually pretty weak and their smoke isn't strong enough to keep them completely hidden on their own. Night Terrors are very unique in that, like the other dragons so far, they aren't very powerful individually, but their pack mentality is just insane. Gathering behind the Alpha Night Terror, the dragon pack is able to fly close together and form the shapes of larger, more intimidating dragons for protection. They'll create Night Furies, Rumble Horns, simply large Night Terrors, and their coordination is crazy, moving together as a pack to actually give the illusion of flapping their wings or moving their body. But while they are more powerful and more intimidating as a pack, on their own, Night Terrors aren't really much of a threat. If you remove their Alpha too, will the other Night Terrors become much more fearful and less organized. Also, the Night Terrors disguise as a larger dragon would easily fail during the day, as a predator could see the white of the alpha and the outlines of all the other night terrors, which is why night terrors are nocturnal. The armor wing's body is unique in that it is highly magnetic, attracting any metal to its body instantly. From there, the metal can actually be welded to the armor wing's body by the dragon's flame, increasing its durability and power which really does help because without its metal armor, well, the armor wing has vulnerable scaleless skin. And if just one attack lands on them, well, they can be knocked out. The armor wing's tail is long and flexible. It's actually one of the dragon's 
most fortified body parts. As a result, the dragon's tail can be whipped around like a heavy chain. It can even use its tail to fling flaming projectiles made from its metal. These powerful attacks, however, gradually expose the armor wing's scaleless body, so it only uses them in extreme circumstances. The Hot Burple is probably most well known for its incredible bite force that can crush boulders and iron, and are the only known dragons that can actually bite their way through dragon-proof metal. While the dragon is definitely very slow and clumsy, a Hot Burple in combat is a sight to behold. The dragon goes into an absolute frenzy when provoked, knocking down everything in its path and headbutting into enemies, all while roaring and showing off some extreme ferocity. Of course, this is a pretty rare sight. Hot burples are easily one of the laziest dragons known to exist, who will frequently fall asleep, usually at the most inconvenient times. Like all boulder class dragons, Gronkles have extremely strong jaws, being able to crush boulders with ease. They're also incredibly strong, and oftentimes will use that kind of brute strength when they're in fights. They also have some impressive firepower. Now, Gronkles are unique because while most dragons use flammable gas, these dragons will actually eat rocks and melt them down in their stomach, then firing these lava blasts out at opponents. They're also one of the toughest dragons that we've seen, they have extremely tough and durable scales all across their body. Single-minded and constantly feeding, the Cavern Crasher may lack wings, but that just makes its body even more adapted to survive deep beneath the earth. With its reinforced beak and claws, while well, the dragon is able to climb across rock walls and even hang upside down from stalactites, they also have a collapsible skeleton making this dragon one of the most flexible dragons out there and allows them to navigate and squeeze through even the tightest cracks throughout its cave territory. But the Cavern Crasher's most dangerous ability has to be its ability to excrete slick mucus from all over its body and set the mucus on fire, and of course flinging that mucus on opponents. Now, the only problem here is that the dragon can be overwhelmed by powerful enough fire blasts that can cook that mucus away, effectively taking away both the dragon's defense and any offensive power too. It's also really suited to life underground, and so it can't be nearly as effective in a fight outside of a confined space. The Velociraptors of the dragon world, Speed Stingers are fast, aggressive, and incredibly intelligent. They use coordinated attacks, moving in packs of dozens at a time, all led by the lead Speed Stinger. Now, Speed Stingers do have wings, but they're kind of small and underdeveloped, so the species is essentially flightless. And so being confined to land, they rely pretty much on ice bridges and glaciers to move from place to place in search of food. But the plus side is that they are the fastest dragon on land. While other dragons might be able to outfly them, no one can outrun a speed stinger. Additionally, when running at full velocity, a speed stinger's feet allows the dragon to run up walls and even run upside down on ceilings. A stinger's main weapon is its poisonous barbed tail, where even a single sting can render any human or dragon completely paralyzed for hours or even days. Although speed stingers are incapable of producing flames, they make up for this with their venom and are still incredibly dangerous. Finally, these dragons had developed incredibly thick hides to protect them from the heat and friction when they race at top speed. And this skin also protects them from a lot of other attacks too. While incredibly docile and almost like the dragon version of a cow, don't let that entirely fool you. The Buffalo Lord can be extremely powerful and unleash some ferocious attacks, especially if you get between it and its food. A lot like a pufferfish, 
the buffalo can inflate its body to twice its normal size, and sharp spines completely cover its body. The buffalo then can actually shoot these spikes out from all over its body during an attack as a defense mechanism. On top of that, mostly because of its size, the buffalo is just incredibly strong and powerful, able to move and overpower things multiple times its size. However, its docile nature is the biggest thing here. The buffalo is just incredibly calm, will very rarely attack. Catastrophic quakens have the unique ability to tightly roll themselves up into a ball that actually looks a lot like a boulder. And from there, well, they can fly up into the air, then forcefully slam into the ground, generating some pretty powerful shockwaves that can knock over other dragons, people, or anything in the area. They're also very strong and durable, and can easily break through rock walls, boulders, and pretty much anything else in their path. They're even able to chew on rocks as hard as marble. Out of all the dragons out there, one of the most unusual and dangerous has to be the hideous Zippleback. The Zippleback is one of the largest dragons and is definitely unmistakable with its twin heads. And funny enough, these heads are completely distinct from each other, each with their own separate thoughts and different personalities. Like most dragons, they are able to fly, but their wings are small and so they prefer to spend most of their time on the ground instead. But probably what's most unique about them is their fire attack. Instead of simply breathing fire, one head will breathe out a green, flammable gas, while the other head will produce an electrical spark, igniting the gas and forming deadly explosions or massive fire blasts. Zippleback can also hide within this gas, using it as a smoke screen, allowing them to sneak up on an opponent and strike unexpectedly. Storm cutters might be incredibly large, but don't let this dragon's size distract you from its speed. With its four wings, it's able to dart through the skies incredibly fast. With that combination of power and speed, what well, makes for a deadly dragon. Their X-wing nature ensures that they're one of the fastest and most agile dragons in the sky, performing tight turns and acrobatic maneuvers that many other dragons can't. They're also incredibly strong, have a powerful blast of fire, and due to their hard scales, they're able to take many powerful hits without really being damaged. Patient and organized strategist by nature, Scaldrons are one of the few dragons known to prey on other dragons. They'll hunt in groups or pods, and have picked off smaller species to near extinction. Although a Skaldron has never been seen to shoot flames, the few Vikings who had survived encounters with the fearsome sea dragon has reported smelling traces of the signature flammable gas that precedes a dragon fire strike. Instead, what Skaldrons do is scoop up water in their gullets, like pelicans, and then boil it internally and shoot the boiling hot water out again. With its long neck, the Skaldron has a long firing range and can blast an entire ship in a matter of seconds. Now, being ocean-based, the Skaldron will not typically attack on land. In fact, if a Skaldron is out of water for too long, its body will dry out and eventually die, unless it's returned to the sea before it's too late. Despite their dreadful reputation, Skaldrons actually possess a secret healing ability. Their venom is the only known antidote to the rare dragon flower, whose pollen can prove harmful, even fatal, to all dragons. Now, the normal fireworm isn't that impressive. It's not particularly strong or powerful, and it's really only about the size of your hand. However, the fireworm queen is a whole different story. A fireworm queen lays thousands of eggs in her lifetime and builds a massive nest made of flammable gel known as firecomb in order to house all her many eggs. 
Now, the only known fireworm queen lives on Fireworm Island in the base of a dormant volcano. Her firecomb nest extends through multiple catacombs where she tends to all her many baby fireworms. Like all mother dragons, the queen is incredibly protective of her home and babies. But while aggressive, the fireworm queen is not overtly malicious. If an intruder returns stolen fire combs or backs off quickly, she might just let them leave in one piece. Although her sting is lethal to most humans and dragons, it actually possesses a restorative power for all Stoker class dragons, meaning one bite from a fireworm queen can reignite a Stoker's failing flames and bring them back to full firepower. Giant winged snakes with venomous scales and fangs, slither wings are truly the stuff of nightmares. And as if one slither wing wasn't deadly enough, the poisonous dragon tends to hunt in packs, making it even more dangerous. Like regular snakes, the slither wing's bright coloration indicates its venom level. So the more colorful the slither wing, the deadlier the attack. They're highly toxic and incredibly aggressive dragons, which indicates that might have been overhunted as a species. These oversized serpents slither at top speed, sedate prey with their toxins in their bite, and drag them back to their pit for dinner. Equally aggressive against Vikings and dragons, slither wings fear only one thing. Ironically enough, fire. Instead of breathing fire, the thunder drum produces a strong concussive sound that can actually kill a viking at close enough range. The blast is so powerful, the dragon is said to get its power from Thor himself. In fact, legend has it that when the thunder drum hatches from its egg, it makes a sound so loud that it rattles the sky. When not swelling up its body to yell, the thunder drum actually are able to flatten themselves completely flat by expelling out all the air from their massive lungs. And in this thinner form, well, they can actually skim across the surface of the water or even dive beneath the waves in search of prey. Now, while it's true that thunder drums can create a tremendous amount of noise, they're also able to actually cancel out each other's sonic blasts. Basically, how that works is that by setting their roar to the proper frequency, a thunder drum can use its sound waves to negate an attacking thunder drum's shout, turning it all into a rather calming wave of white noise. Although normally withdrawn and wary of humans, Dramillions have the unique ability to mimic the fire blast of any dragon they encounter. And with their striking coloration, peaked crown, and curved beaks, Dramillions have often been called the parrots of the dragon world because of this ability. The Dramillion duplicates blasts that look and burn like the real thing. Because of that, it's no wonder that dragon hunters once forced Dramillions to reproduce their many fire forms for training drills. Dramillions have the highest shot count of any other dragon species by far. And on top of that, Dramillions can also transfer their flames to each other. If one dragon runs out of heat, then the rest of its pack is able to share their reserves with the spent Dramillion so it can fire up again. The chameleon-like change wings are skilled predators and are really some of the deadliest dragons in the Book of Dragons. Their camouflaging skills are absolutely second to none, allowing them to blend in with rocks, trees, foliage unit buildings around them. Additionally, change wings often are able to change colors based on their mood, not just their surroundings. Instead of fire like most dragons, they're able to shoot out hot, corrosive acid that burns through wood and rocks. They're also extremely agile and fast, even when moving along the ground. Interesting enough, change wings have a social structure similar to a lion pride, meaning that it's the female change wings that do most of the hunting and defense. A forest-dwelling dragon of absolutely immense size, 
The Typhoomerang was the first new species of dragon that was discovered by the Burke Dragon Academy. However, and though it's a relatively new dragon, with their large horns, massive wingspan, and their ability to disrupt vertical air pressure while exhaling flames in order to create fire tornadoes, the passionate and hot-tempered Typhoomerang has quickly made itself known in the dragon hierarchy. And a Typhoomerang doesn't just create a flaming spiral, it can actually turn into one itself. By pulling its large wings tightly over its body and descending from the stratosphere in a corkscrew fashion, a Typhoomerang can ignite its entire body and drill through the air in order to attack enemies. Crimson Gore Gutters are absolutely massive in size, and because of that, well, they carry with them an unbelievable amount of strength, helping them destroy basically anything in its path when angered. Mighty as they are, these dragons are incredibly loyal to their alpha and are very caring to those around them who they consider to be their friends. While they might not be one of the fastest dragons out there, that really doesn't mean much to them. Their size is an absolute gift, to the point where legend says that you can see the Crimson Gore Gutter from miles away. These unique dragons are also born of absolutely enormous antlers that they'll use as weapons in battle. They come with a shocking axe-like tail, meaning that most enemies don't stand much of a chance against them. They also have an incredible ear-splitting call they'll use to communicate with others from a way off distance. These roaring calls also come in handy whenever reinforcements are needed in a fight. Known as the Bloodhound of all dragons, the Rumblehorn's keen sense of smell allows it to track essentially anything anywhere, meaning that there's nowhere to hide from this dragon. On top of that, the rumble horn is built like a rhino or a tank, meaning that when the dragon doesn't want to move, well, it doesn't move. When the rumble horn makes a charge, well, you better get out of the way or you're going to absolutely be trampled. The snow wraith is to winter what the night fury is to darkness and night. The dragon is able to sense the fall of each snowflake, it hears the glacial movement of every iceberg. It feels the slightest change in even the most frigid of temperatures. On top of that, snow wraiths have no known vulnerabilities, making them a supremely formidable force to be reckoned with during any fight. These dragons were first discovered during an expedition to Glacier Island, and this is their only known habitat where they are the sole and unquestioned rulers of this island. So whenever the chill wind roars, well, it might just be the weather, or it might be the snow wraith descending upon its next victim. Almost no dragon out there is more ferocious or more feared than the monstrous nightmare. As a member of the Stoker class of dragons, they are incredibly hot-headed have a particularly strong ability to breathe some powerful fire. They're also known for setting their entire body on fire, something called a fire jacket, making the monstrous nightmare even more scary and intimidating. The nightmare's gigantic head and mouth can swallow a viking whole. It's very aggressive and territorial, will never run from a fight. Its fire is thick and almost liquid clinging to walls and running down hills like a flaming river. The Deadly Natter is one of the most beautiful dragons out there, but also one of the most dangerous, a true offensive powerhouse. In fact, the Natter is probably one of the most impressive offensive firepowers of any dragon yet. But with an incredibly strong bite, the ability to shoot out tail spikes with impressive accuracy and covered in deadly venom. They're one of the fastest dragons that we've seen, and they also have one of the hottest fire blasts out of all the dragons. They also have a magnesium blast, which is hot and powerful enough to melt metal, 
and turn any Viking into ash. Death Grippers are venomous, violent, and overall vile dragons. A monstrous species with protruding tusks, four claw pincers, and poisonous club tails. This one of a kind dragon eerily resembles a venomous scorpion, but they actually act more like wild dogs, traveling in packs and enjoying hunting for prey. Now, while some dragon trainers are able to bring out their softer side, for the most part, these dragons should be avoided at all costs. Death Grippers can hack, slash, and bludgeon a foe with lethal force. Although deceptively beautiful, both in appearance and melody, the Death Song has a lethal quality that's actually reminiscent of the Black Widow. Inhabiting a lush island beyond the archipelago, this dragon vocalizes its beautiful and hypnotic siren call in order to lure other dragons towards it, which it then targets as prey. Rather than using fire to attack, the Death Song shoots out a liquid substance which traps and preserves victims as it hardens into a stiff amber cocoon that's penetrable only by flame. Typically, the Death Song chooses to entrap dragons only, but it also preys upon humans unfortunate enough to make their way to its island. Its key weakness are thunder drums, which find themselves mostly immune to the Death Song's lethal lullaby due to poor hearing. Then, of course, small enclosed spaces can actually make it vulnerable to its own song. One single blade of the Razor Whip's tail is as deadly as the sharpest battle axe, making this dragon arguably one of the most dangerous dragons that the riders have ever faced. The Razor Whip is also naturally aggressive and deadly, with its barbed tail what can squeeze the life out of any viking or dragon, or simply slice anything that it comes in contact with the pieces. It's so dangerous that even the tears from its eyes are poisonous. The Razor Whip is also an impressive fighter, extremely agile in the air with incredible maneuverability. In fact, the only known vulnerability that the Razor Whip has is that it loves to eat sea slugs, meaning that it's fairly easy to locate. Outside of that, Razor Whips are reclusive by choice due to extreme mistrust of both humans and dragons. However, those who are able to prove their worthiness to a Razor Whip will have made a powerful friend and ally for life. The Light Fury moves as fast as a Night Fury and shares their ability to blend into the sky, even during daylight hours. In fact, with her white coloration, the Light Fury hides seamlessly in clouds, sea fog, and distant horizons. On top of that, they're able to temporarily transform each scale into a reflective surface that mirrors the Light Fury surroundings, essentially turning herself invisible. Although skittish and a bit skeptical, the Light Fury shares Toothless's deep sense of empathy and will always wield her plasma blast to defend any in need. Classified as a boulder class dragon, the Whispering Death is one of the most feared creatures on the Isle of Burke. Now, the good news is, these dragons are pretty easy to identify, but with their bulging eyes, large spiked bodies, and the hundreds of sharp teeth that line the entirety of their mouth. And as if that wasn't enough, these deadly teeth can rotate making an eerie noise that sounds like hundreds of people whispering. This whisper and the sound of the ground rumbling are the only two signs that the dragon is approaching. And while other dragons are sensitive to these noises, they know the danger. Most Vikings have a difficult time hearing these noises until it's too late. The Whispering Death has a snake-like body reaching approximately 95 feet in length and weighing up to 2,500 pounds. Because of its long, thin body, its tail often makes a cracking whip noise as it moves. 
razor sharp teeth are not the only thing that make its mouth deadly. It also possesses the strongest jaws of all the dragons, which it uses to travel through solid rock and to burrow underground. Now, if its sharp teeth don't get you, it can also expel scorching rings of fire or shoot the spines that grow on its head and body at you. The only known weakness of this dragon are its poor eyesight, sunlight, and the inability of its sharp teeth to rip through steel. Vicious, aggressive, belligerent. These are only three of the words that can describe the triple strike in battle, the incredible fury that it unleashes with its trio of braided tails. Displaying an ornery disposition from the very beginning of their lives, triple strikes make the ideal champion in underground combat arenas, with their barbed hides that deflect attacks, their intense fire blasts that blind opponents, and their tail that braids into a single powerful weapon, a triple strike wins most fights on intimidation alone. But victory sometimes breeds vanity, and exploiting this overconfidence is often the only way to defeat a triple strike in battle. A triple strike's braided tail is a force to be reckoned with, but each tail produces a unique venom. A sting from the first tail numbs combatants, the second disorients them with mild hallucinogens, the third creates an agonizing burning in your very own blood. Like something out of a campfire ghost story, the Flightmare doesn't even seem like a real dragon emitting a banshee wail and glowing like a phantasm. The Flightmare has haunted Burkeans for generations. The Flightmare's glow comes from its primary food supply, a unique type of algae that flows through the woods around the Isle of Burke. This algae glows with bioluminescence in the light of Arvindale's fire, a northern lights display that occurs every few years over Burke. When the Flightmare eats the algae, it also glows, giving it an unnatural appearance. The Flightmare's abilities are almost entirely defensive, so it can be overpowered when cornered or outnumbered by tougher dragons. And because of this, it's become a very territorial and short-tempered dragon, and incredibly protective over its algae food supply. Flightmares emit a toxic mist that can temporarily paralyze a human, which has led to the legend of Flightmares scaring Vikings stiff. While it wears off after a few minutes, the potent mist immobilizes the Flightmares target long enough for it to strike. Fiercely territorial, singe tails don't just breathe fire. They send it blasting out all around their body of their jaws, gills, and tails, everything. First discovered when Storehouse Island was colonized, the elusive singe tails prefer to scare away their enemies with long-range attacks, like hurling fireballs from their tails. However, singe tails also pose a danger in close quarters combat by shunting jets of flame from their gills lining their underbellies. Plus, no dragon or rider can ever get the drop on a singe tail due to its articulated eyes. They swivel to the sides and back of its head and give the singe tail a 360 degree lay of the land. And since it can look at two directions at once, the singe tail can effectively act as its own tail gunner. One of the most mysterious and feared dragon species in the Book of Dragons, the Skrill is aggressive, powerful, and nearly untrainable. Squirrels don't breathe fire. Instead, they channel lightning down their metallic spines, firing it from their mouths in a shower of destructive blasts. They can also store this electrical power in their bodies and release it later on. Because of this unique firepower, squirrels tend to gravitate towards stormy weather and are famous for flying through storms. So if you find yourself flying through a thunderstorm, Watch out! Squirrels are also very tough. They can take a lot of damage in battle and give as good as they get. 
they can hibernate in icy glaciers for decades at a time and emerge as fierce as the day they were frozen. Finally, Skrills are known to be excellent, agile, and quick flyers. It's even been said that a Skrill can fly almost as fast as a Night Fury. The Sentinels spend their lives perched on the sea stacks all through the outskirts of Vanaheim, where they watch over the Dragon Graveyard and all dragons who have made this island their final resting place. Often mistaken for stone statues, the Sentinels remain absolutely still when they allow ailing dragons to enter Vanaheim. But if the Sentinels find a dragon or a Viking intruding, they will do all that they can to protect the island, its inhabitants, with sonic screeches and downdraft wing blasts. The sonic screech is used by the Sentinel to disorient their opponents, and the Sentinel can also use its strong and powerful wings to defend the island by creating downdraft wing blasts. This move is strong enough to take out threats straight from both the sky and the ocean. Compared to other dragons, the Sentinel's firepower is considered to be elite. In addition to its impressive collection of defensive moves, the Sentinel is also known for having enhanced senses as a result of its inability to see. While the Sentinels may be blind, the dragon is still able to move around and maneuver itself with relative ease. This is a result having overly developed senses, especially its sense of smell. All this combined with its speed and agility make it quite a powerful dragon. Yet despite their fearsome appearance, sentinels show a softer side by caring for the old and ill dragons who have come to spend their final days on Vanaheim. And if you're ever unsure how to handle an unfamiliar type of dragon, just follow a sentinel's lead. These observant dragons have kept watch over every class and every breed to pass into their cemetery, making them the dragon experts of the dragon world. Secretly responsible for centuries of human and dragon conflict, the Red Death used its commanding presence to order other dragons to raid nearby villages and bring it a constant supply of food. From its lair deep within the core of a volcano, this titan wing reigned supreme, until Toothless led Stoic, Gobber, and the other Burke Vikings to the blighted shores of Dragon Island. The Red Death was so engorged on power by this time that it had to shatter its mountain home in order to emerge and fight these human intruders. Fortunately, the timely arrival of Burke's Dragon Riders and the fateful reunion of Hiccup and Toothless led to the discovery of the Red Death's only vulnerable spot, its insides. Similar to the Bewilder Beast's ability to bend other dragons to its will, the Red Death emitted a homing signal which summoned other dragons to its lava-strewn nest. This call was produced by a combination of a sub-vocal call and the fearsome stare of its many, many eyes. As with all members of the animal kingdom, dragons too must follow a hierarchy of power and leadership, and at the apex of that chain of command rules an exceedingly rare alpha dragon to which all others bow, the Bewilderbeast. However, Bewilderbeasts are not born to that alpha status. Instead, it's earned through combat, vigilance, and most importantly, a desire to protect the dragon and all other creatures in its nest. Fortunately for Bewilderbeasts, there are few other dragons in the world that can match their intimidating stature and ever hope to compete with the designation of King of All Dragons. The wilderbeasts are also quite impressive architects, fashioning near impenetrable nests out of their self-generated ice, using natural hot springs to provide warmth and sustenance to the flock under its care. From its oasis within its icy cocoon, the bewildered beast rules all dragons without bias, without malice, and without question. Born every hundred years or so, 
The Screaming Death has all the strengths of its subordinate cousin, the Whispering Death, with none of its weaknesses, meaning that it's the most powerful dragon Burke has faced since the Red Death. Unlike the Whispering Death, this dragon has no aversion to sunlight. In fact, young Screaming Deaths are actually drawn to a bright light. It shoots large spines from its tail and can breathe massive amounts of fire in a single blast. But the Screaming Death's real strength is its insatiable appetite. Like the Whispering Death, the Screaming Death likes to tunnel, consuming sea stacks and decimating entire islands. An adolescent Screaming Death nearly destroyed the town of Burke. When it reached adulthood, it nearly ate all of Dragon Island along with five other islands before that. You can't really defeat the Screaming Death. It's too fast, too angry, too powerful. The best you can hope to do is find a way to lure it somewhere else. The Night Fury was once considered to be one of the most mysterious and fearsome species of dragons. In fact, until Hiccup befriended Toothless, no one even knew what a Night Fury looked like because they prefer to attack at night, when their black scales allow them to blend into the night sky, making them mostly invisible. Night Furies are classified as members of the Strike class. They have the ability to dive bomb, meaning that they can plummet from great heights, gaining speed as they continue downwards, then shoot a plasma blast at their target. For a long time, the only information that the Vikings had gathered on this rare dragon was the whistling sound of its speed cutting through the night sky, followed by a bright purple light. Then finally, a massive explosion. Rather than firing like most dragons, Night Furies are able to shoot plasma blasts from their mouths. They're also extremely swift and use their speed and coloration to blend into the night sky. While they may initially seem like vicious, dangerous creatures, Hiccup's friendship with Toothless has increased our understanding of the true nature of the Night Fury. They are highly intelligent, loyal, and fiercely protective of those they care about. But what do y'all think? Sound off in the comments down below. I know you're gonna have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. If you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video, that's amazing. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. And if you want to go subscribe, well, go subscribe. You're going to see more videos like this one every single week. I'll see y'all then. I'll see y'all next time.